Hello, hello, and welcome to The Graced Podcast, where we infuse everyday magic into your everyday life through rituals, wellness, tarot, astrology, business, and so much more. Today's guest is Raven Rose, a womb healer, combo practitioner, and menstrual health herbalist. We talk about Raven's experience having painful periods, which led her on a path to understand her cycles, both physically and spiritually, which ultimately led her to empower herself with herbal and ancestral knowledge, unlocking her creativity. Raven and I talk about the themes of the Empress card, accessing one's fertile creativity, connecting to your womb space, which has no gender, as well as ancestors, dreams, and so much more. Before we get into the episode, since the Empress is all about unlocking your creativity, I want to remind you to check out the Create Your Deck Club, which is a membership that will guide you throughout the complete process of how to create your own deck and be surrounded by like-minded people who are also in the deck creation process with you. If this is something that has been calling you, take this as a sign. Go to createyourdeck.club to learn more. Now let's get into the episode. Hello and welcome to the podcast, Raven. Yeah, thanks for having me, Grace. I'm really excited about this. Amazing. So today we're diving into the themes of the Empress card, which represents the themes of goddess energy, fertility, love, creativity, birth, and Mother Earth. I thought, who would be better to talk to than my dear friend, Raven, who I feel embodies goddess energy in her everyday life, by prioritizing her rituals of rest, cultivating creativity, and finding purpose through her own pain of healing her womb. Raven, could you tell us more about how you started mood medicine and how you were led onto this journey of healing your womb and eventually offering your wisdom to others about how to heal theirs. Yeah. So first I would say that my journey with my journey has womb healing has been a big part of it, but womb healing has really been more of a catalyst for deeper self-exploration and really tapping into my spiritual journey and being an active participant in my spiritual journey. So I really appreciate everything that I've learned from my womb healing experiences, but ultimately they've fueled me on the bigger spiritual journey. And that's kind of like the, um, that's been more of the focus of my life. When I look back over all the things that I've done to uh, connect with my womb space, balance my menstrual cycle and all of that. And really that's how moon medicine started was me exploring how to heal myself because I tried to do the medical route when I didn't have an idea of what to do about my cycle when I was experiencing a lot of menstrual pain. And so the menstrual, uh, the medical route took me down a path of dealing with um, the really damaging effects of hormonal birth control and um, not only physically, but emotionally and mentally. And once I realized the impact that that had on me, I basically separated from fr- separated from it completely and decided to just take my own path. And that was when I really dove into nutrition and meditation and all the things things that have become a really big part of my life now and also led me down a path of studying women's herbalism and ethnobotany, going to the Yucatan and studying womb massage and also um, doing a year of herbal field studies and actually going out into the field and connecting with plants and also going into the Amazon and living in the Amazon to become a combo practitioner um, where I lived for a month. And so I had all these really amazing experiences that were a part of my womb healing journey. But in the 
bigger sense, they were part of my spiritual journey and my journey of life. And that's how I created Moon Medicine was uh, basically, I forgot about that part, going on this journey of, um, yeah, doing all these explorations into herbalism and womb wellness. That is how Moon Medicine started. I actually didn't have any intention of starting a business, but I had gone so far down the path and learned so much that people were starting to approach me for guidance on how to balance and heal their menstrual cycles. Um, and also because I incorporate a lot of ancestral work in my womb healing because I, the two are so, they're inter, completely intertwined. Um, it's kind of hard to do womb work without also doing ancestral work. So that was a big part of um, what I brought into my business as well. That's awesome. So I just wanted to back up to give people context into why you started Moon Medicine, because I know your story, but listeners do not. So from what I understand, you started Moon Medicine from your own pain of experiencing menstrual pain. Is that right? Um, yeah, I, I had really painful menstrual cycles for a long time. Um, and I had to yeah, find my own way in, in healing because the medical world didn't really have a solution for me. And ultimately what it came down to was finding my own path, finding my own way, uh, working with herbs, working with uh, meditation, which has been, I would say, one of the biggest healers for me. And dealing with pain was a pretty big catalyst for the journey that I took. Great. And you were speaking about ancestors. And I was wondering how you incorporate your connection to your ancestor. What wisdom? Yeah. So my ancestral work, I would say really, I started getting a lot of messages from my ancestors when I was younger in my dreams. And when I really dove into ancestral work more as an adult was when I was at a point in my healing journey of trying to um, get rid of menstrual pain, I got to a point where I felt like I had done everything I could. I didn't know, really know what else to do. I had gone from 10 days of pain down to like two and a half days of pain, but it was still really, really intense. And so I tried to ask for help and ask for guidance. I needed some more clarity on how to actually clear the pain that I was still dealing with. And I didn't have anywhere else to turn but to my ancestors. So I was already working with herbs a lot and making herbal smoking blends and herbal incense blends. And that really helped me to kind of open up that connection. I was also doing a lot of um, getting back into dream work in a really big way because dream work was really big for me as a, as a kid growing up. And so I got back into dream work and just asked my ancestors to help me and to guide me. And they came through in a really big way um, through my dreams. And then and as I started learning tarot, actually, I was trying to read all the books and learn about the cards. And eventually I started doing readings for my family. And uh, my dad told me that my great grandmother also used to read tarot and one of my aunts also used to read tarot. And so when I learned that, I reached out to them through DreamWork and received so much guidance from them about how to, um, how to read tarot, how to work with energy, how to um, dig deeper into plant medicine and dream work. And the relationship that I have with my ancestors has just blossomed ever since. So I was wondering, whoever wants to connect to their ancestors through dream work, how would they go about that? Well, I would say definitely start with just opening that connection verbally, maybe creating a sacred space for yourself where maybe you have maybe one evening you basically create a little ritual around incorporating the elements. That's one thing that was really important for me when I was first starting out with connecting to my ancestors. I would always have a cup of water near my bed, um, usually a plant of some kind. And with a plant that you choose, you can choose whatever really, really speaks to you because usually whatever it is that really speaks to you, whatever you most gravitate towards, that's something that you have an ancestral connection with. So I would say go for um, like a, a glass of water, a plant that can represent the element of earth, 
water obviously represents water, um, having a candle, but making sure that you're blowing that out or bed. And, and then your voice would be the element of air and asking your ancestors for guidance, asking them for just to, to make themselves known in your dreams. And I would say do that for a span of time, you know, make it a true ritual. Maybe you do this for three nights in a row or for seven nights in a row of just opening that dialogue, speaking to your ancestors, talking to them like you would talk to a, a close friend and sharing with them what's happening in your life and then paying attention to your dreams to see what symbols show up for you. Um, symbolism is so big when it comes to ancestors for me um, because I come from two lineages of spider women. Spiders have always been a part of my dreams. And whenever I have big dreams with spiders, it's always at this really important time in my life when things are shifting and changing. And it's kind of like their way of saying, hey, connect with us. We're here to help guide you through this big transition. So pay attention to any of those symbols that come through. And also pay attention to any other patterns that you notice. If you notice that in each of those dreams, you are in water, um, that's a really big symbol for um, an emotional connection or a spiritual connection. And that's something that you you can pull from your dreams into your day-to-day -day life to then start exploring, maybe working with water in different ways, maybe doing um, some kind of practice with water. Maybe you're doing herbal baths or um, working with herbal teas, and that could be a pathway for you to further explore your ancestral lineage. That's amazing. There's so many tidbits that you said that are sparking these lights <laughs> that are going off in my brain. But I love that you learned tarot from your ancestors and that they gave you tips through your dreams and that you're able to have such a strong connection to them through your dreams. And when you were talking about spiders in the Cosmic Creatures deck, um, I remember writing about how spiders also weave webs. And so essentially you're also creating stories together with your lineage through these webs and stories that you're spinning and currently spinning. So how do you feel that your ancestors are guiding you forward to what you're being led to now? Yeah, this has been in really, because I'm, I'm at this point of transition in my life where I've been refocused on my artwork and music. And now it's been um, a kind of a really big shift to look at my priorities and what's actually driving me. And I think for me, being able to understand myself on a deeper level really requires me to reach out to my ancestors and ask them for guidance. Um, this is something that ha I've always kind of done where if I feel blocked or if I feel like I'm ready for a new path, it's kind of like I have to go back to where I came from in order to know where I'm going next. So connecting with my ancestors now is like, it's such an important part of my life with where I'm at um, in order to take steps on a new journey because I've been having actually lots of spider dreams lately and lots of spiders showing up in my life. Um, randomly spiders in my car while I'm driving. And I'm like, okay, this is definitely a sign that there's a big transition coming and there's a lot of guidance that, that my ancestors have for me. And it's interesting because at each stage of life and each part of my journey, there are different ancestors that can show up. At this stage of my life that I'm stepping into now, I have ancestors that are showing up that were with me when I was very young um, and I was more connected to music. And as I'm stepping into artwork and music more and more, the quality of the dreams have shifted a little bit and the guidance that I received has shifted more because I have just a different set of ancestors that are showing up for me now. That's beautiful. And I love that you you essentially have a spiritual team guiding you forward and different ancestors are appearing for you depending on what your needs are in the moment. And so I feel that whoever's listening uh, to also to not be afraid to ask for help and to be open to who comes forward, but also to clarify, to call in your most benevolent ancestors, you know, people who 
or spirits who have your best interests at heart. I wanted to also tie in the Empress card because the Empress is very much rooted in Earth energy and ancestors are rooted uh, in Earth energy as well. I mean, in the spiritual realm too. And I, I love that ritual you had mentioned that combines the four elements of Earth with the plant. And you also mentioned that whatever plant you're drawn to, typically you have an ancestral tie to water, which relates to your emotions, uh, air, which is your voice and breath, and also essentially comes from your ancestors too. Uh, and fire, really that spark that can transcend, can burn what no longer needs to be there, but also can be a source of connection to bring you to a new phase of life. What rituals are you drawn to nowadays? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I actually wanted to tap in on what you said before about calling who you're calling in as far as ancestors. Um, and then I'll jump into the rituals that I'm um, connected to now. One of the things that I have noticed in the journey is that it's really important to, of course, um, to be mindful about the energies that we're calling in, but also to remember that the energies that come in are going to be connected to what is happening within us. And and if there is some kind of imbalance within us, we're naturally going to attract um, some external energies that match that. And so, yes, it's important to ask for our ancestors who have our highest and best interest in mind, but also to be aware that um, if there's some kind of disharmony within us, if there's something that needs to be healed, oftentimes it's the ancestors that can reflect that energy back to us that can also help and be a part of that journey. Um, and with the with the assistance of those more helpful and loving and be benevolent ancestors. And yeah, so that's one thing. And then as far as my current rituals, lately it's mostly been focused on artwork. Um, I have always been really drawn to just the creative process and what that looks like. And I'm right now working on what the creative process looks like for me. And I'm also someone who likes to study and learn and take all the courses and do all those things. But um, I found for me right now, what's most powerful is connecting to those um, creative processes and practices that are really truly my own and come from my own essence. So my daily ritual, one of my biggest daily rituals is a morning meditation. I meditate every day. I've been meditating for now 802 days in a row at this point. And um, meditation has brought me much closer to my creative energy and my own creative expression. So that's a really important ritual, daily ritual for me. Also, I love to work with herbs. I work with herbal teas a lot. And I often will do a practice where um, if there's a particular herb that's really calling out to me from my meditations, like uh, lately it's been milky oats or oat straw. I've been working with that in a more like regular basis. So I'll work with an herb for like a full moon cycle or for just a span of time that it's really calling out and speaking to me. And then just pay attention to the insights and the wisdom that I get from uh, from working with that plant and what I feel most drawn to in my day-to-day -day life and how it helps me to navigate my life in a different way. For me lately, it's been about breaking out of old comfortable patterns and stepping into new uh, ways of living and being. So my rituals have, my main ritual, which is meditation, has been like the guide for me um, to explore new ways of living. That's amazing. So I also wanted to go back and clarify about the benevolent ancestors. I'm very much a believer that inner reflects outer. And so I totally agree with you that whatever needs to be healed or whatever is coming forward is present for you in the moment. I feel that in connection to ancestors and to the intention of calling a presence in, whether it be an ancestor or a guide or whatever you want to call in, I think it's nice to add in that extra word <laughs> to be intentional about what you choose to call in. And whatever is reflected in the external world doesn't necessarily have to be an ancestor per se, but can play out as a situation or a person that you meet in your life or you know something that feels like a karmic relationship or something like that. So I think 
that the lessons that we learn in our lives can expand beyond our ancestors, but I think the practice of using specific words can be helpful because words are spells. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, words are really, really important. The, what, the words that we say to ourselves, the things that we call into our lives, how we think about ourselves, um, it's all very, very important to the journey. And um, a big part of my journey has been really being mindful about my words and how I am uh, speaking about myself and how I'm speaking about others. And just having that awareness, that self-awareness is so important um, because it can be easy if you haven't learned to pay attention to how we're speaking about ourselves or things like that, that um, we can call in things that we don't necessarily want. So yeah, absolutely. It's so important for the journey to have that self-awareness of how we speak about ourselves, how we speak about others, what we're calling into our lives. Um, and that's actually been a really big part of this transition for me. And, um, you know, this, my daily rituals and practices and just observing my daily life and being mindful of how I speak about myself, but also the people that I have around me. And this is why I think we get along so well, because we're both really mindful about our words and how we speak. And um, lately I've had to cut some people out of my life that do not have that same um, awareness. And it's kind of challenging, but also a really important part of the journey because how we speak about ourselves and how we speak about others is the life that we create for ourselves. And ultimately, we have a relationship with ourselves through the end of time. And the people that come in and out of our lives are often reflections of how we choose to love and treat ourselves. And I think that's very Empress energy of cutting people out that aren't necessarily vibrating at the level that you want to vibrate at. And sometimes it can feel very confining um, because your soul wants to evolve into a new level of expression. And I think that's something about the Empress card that is so powerful that there's this birthing cycle, there's expression, there's creativity. And so I was wondering, what does the creation process look like for you in how you're exploring it and uh, coming into a new phase of expression for yourself? For me, it's it's very cycle based. I really do connect with my the phases of my menstrual cycle to it's just a part of how I express myself. And I'm very much aware of how the phase that I'm in can impact the medium that I work through, how it can impact the type of a short interruption to this lovely conversation to ask you, have you joined the Mystic Mondays Coven yet? This is a free online community where you can connect to like-minded, magical people, where we talk about tarot, moon cycles, astrology, and so much more. All you have to do is head over to coven.mysticmondays.com. See you there! just the energy that is coming up through my artwork. So for me, connecting to my menstrual cycle is really, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say it's an essential part of my life because it's just my life. <laughs> it's just how I live. It's just how I operate is through um, my own cyclical nature, which is really important for me because I've been in periods of time, like many people have, where I was not connected to those phases of my cycle and that brought a lot of health issues. Um, and so for me right now, uh, for example, I am at my ovulation phase, which has been a really powerfully creative time. Like during this time, I cannot start my day unless I create something, unless I put some kind of artwork onto paper. So that's really important for me. Um, and then like through the phases of my cycle, it depends on where I'm at. Some phase, like in my follicular phase, I'm much more about um, kind of like this playfulness and curiosity. Um, I can maybe dive into learning a new style and exploring that. Whereas in my luteal phase, I'm more focused on the finer details of my artwork. That's kind of when I go back and will um, 
you know, put finishing touches or add second or third layer to a piece or, um, yeah, just kind of get into more of the details of the work. And as I'm approaching menstruation, um, I just notice that there is a shift more toward away from like watercolor as my main medium to music and song. So, um, I kind of just allow myself to flow through the phases of my menstrual cycle for my creative process. I love that. I love that because on a micro level, you're really checking in with yourself and the cycles that you're going through within your own body. And then on a macro level, there's also the cycles of earth with seasons changing. And every year we know what's coming. And I mean, like winter, spring, fall, summer, not in that order. <laughs> but <laughs> there is change. There's a constant cycle of change that we as humans experience. And sometimes I think people are afraid of change. And I feel like from knowing you, you're someone that welcomes change. You're someone that really like wants to grow and you're like always developing yourself. And I also feel like that's another reason why we get along so well. And so I'm wondering what would you say to anyone who is resisting change? You know, Actually, this has been on my mind lately that paying attention to when you're feeling really comfortable um, and just knowing that like being in a comfort zone doesn't really get you the kind of experiences that you may want to have in life. And I feel like for so many people, like I hear my elders, my living elders talk about how life goes by so quickly and maybe they're feeling disappointed about certain aspects of life. And when I, when I hear them speak, I just immediately think of the fact that a lot of times when people feel disconnected from getting to the later stages of life, it's because they missed out on things that they wanted to do and things that they wanted to experience. And I have so many elders that look at me and my path and they're like, oh, I, I want to do that. I wish I could do that. And I think it's really important to be mindful of the comfort zone because that's what keeps people where they are doing what they're doing, the same thing day in and day out and being okay with being uncomfortable and going outside of the comfort zone is um, such a great practice for exploring yourself and for being able to, yeah, being able to embrace change. And it doesn't have to be this big, huge thing of like completely changing everything in your life and doing things that make you super just out of sync with who you are, but it can be so smaller things like trying a different trying a different place in town going to a different going to a workshop that you wouldn't normally go to meeting a different group of people connecting with different kinds of people doing small things that maybe don't seem super big at first but they're just out of your normal routine can be such great ways to just experience more of life and get to know more of yourself as well because every time we have these experiences we are meeting ourselves in a different way and experiencing ourselves in a different way, which is such a wonderful catalyst for change because then it's like, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. That was actually interesting and fun. And I could probably do something like that again, or maybe something a little bit different. And that just kind of creates this chain reaction of stepping a little bit further outside of the comfort zone each time. So some thoughts came up of integrating habits, helpful habits that support you in your life. And what I feel from you is you now have created a habit of meditation, of connecting to your artwork through watercolors, of I think integrating habits in a way where it's supporting your lifestyle and who, but also who you're constantly becoming. And when you're talking about comfort zone, that could also kind of be classified as something within your comfort zone. However, I'm wondering what the divide is or what the overlap can be between helpful habits and your comfort zone and what the difference is between the two. Hmm. Yeah, like for example, with my meditation practice, it's always different. Even though it's a daily practice um, that could be almost seen as like a, a comfort, it's always pushing me in a different way. It's something that when I go to my meditation, it's not always easy. It's not always something that I want to do. It's not always something that feels nice and comfortable. A lot of times it doesn't. And so having that as a daily routine, for me, meditation actually does push me out of my comfort zone. It's much more comfortable to not look inside than it is to look inside. So every day with meditation, 
meditation, I'm looking deeper and deeper within myself before going out into my my world or into my day. So yeah, that's something where it's really any kind of introspective practice anything that helps you to look deeper within yourself is something that will ultimately, it's like pushing to the edges from within. That way I can push to the edges in like how I live my life. Yeah. And it's always so revealing when you do that work for yourself, whether it's meditation or journaling or pulling cards. I think just the willingness and openness to explore those parts of yourself are very brave. Yeah. And it's really powerful to experience like deeper and deeper levels within. Um, it just really can transform anyone who's feeling stuck or not ready for change. I would say meditation or any of those introspective practices would be really helpful for seeing a big change in life. So the Empress card has a lot to do with birthing a new project. Um, sometimes when the card pops up, it could also indicate a physical birth of a baby. And so I was wondering how much fertility has been a theme for you or not been a theme for you within your own exploration of your menstrual health. Fertility is more than about being able to make a baby. It is, it's connected to our creativity. For example, I do a breath work practice that is focused on cultivating the energy from the ovaries, which is that for energy of fertility and, and energy of creation. And and beyond uh, making a baby, that fertil fertility is connected to our creativity. While you don't need to be in your menstruating years and ovulating to be connected to your creativity, it is a really big source of energy for our creative growth and expansion. So yeah, fertility has always been a part of having a healthy menstrual cycle. In order to have a healthy menstrual cycle, we need to be ovulating regularly and menstruating regularly. And so fertility is just a sign of our health and our well-being. If someone that does go through a period of time where they are not ovulating, maybe they're not because if you're not ovulating, then you don't menstruate. So if you're going through a period of time where your menstrual cycle is off, maybe you're not menstruating, then that's saying that something is out of sync. Something in your life, whether it's externally or internally, is out of sync and causing an imbalance. And that is a sign that something needs to be done. There needs to be a change something needs to be brought back into harmony. And a lot of times it's going to be from the inside out. Um, finding peace and harmony within is what is going to help us to balance our nervous systems and regulate our hormones so that we can have peace and harmony in our menstrual cycles and our external world as well. Oftentimes see, like in my practice, a lot of people who have imbalanced menstrual cycles and are having trouble with fertility are also living really imbalanced lives, which stems from inner disharmony. Again, it's that as above, so below as within, so without, where whatever we have happening internally within us have such a big impact on how we experience our cycles and how we experience our lives. So fertility is like this very physical, but also kind of cosmic way of letting us know that um, something is out of harmony within our bodies or in our lives. I love that explanation because the menstrual health is an indication physically of where you can be at if you have a female body body health-wise. However, that's also in a lot of ways symbolic of are you taking your care of yourself mentally? Are you taking care of yourself spiritually? And what ways are you nurturing yourself if you feel like you're in a creative rut or if you feel like you're blocked in some way like writer's block or, you know, not developing, I would say, supportive practices that then get you into a creative state to then birth that big project if you have one. So a lot of it is, I would say, a nurturance of oneself. Yeah, absolutely. And beyond the menstrual cycle, anyone, everyone has a womb space. The womb space is more of an energetic space rather than always being a physical space. So regardless of someone's gender, they can connect to that creative center and nurture it and, and cultivate it. And it's something that is really important for our spiritual growth and because it's also about accepting all of who we are. And a lot of times, for example, I've worked with a lot of male clients in as a combo practitioner, and it's always something that tends to come up where womb health is not just about 
the menstrual cycle. It's also about the energetics of how you're connected to your creative center. I really love that. I love that because I think most people, including myself, thought about the womb as a physical space in my feminine body. However, we both integrate um, masculine and feminine energies. And I feel like a lot of the imbalance could be into having too much of one or just running off. Like, for example, I think for a long time, I was running off a lot of masculine energy and just like doing a lot of things, producing a lot of things, making a lot of decks. (laughs) And that is tiring after a while, you know, you get burnt out. And part of bringing back that feminine energy of nurturance, or even just letting yourself rest and diving into the cycles that are present for us, you know, it's every day we follow a cycle as well. You know, we wake up when the sun rises, uh, depending on your schedule. And then most of us tend to sleep at night when the sun sets and the moon is present for us in her majestic beauty. And so I almost, because as a person who has identified with my creativity uh, for so long, there was a part of myself that really resisted habits or supportive habits, or, you know, I almost didn't want to be tied down by them. But something that I'm realizing more and more is that there are certain structures that can help us feel more free in our lives and to feel more balanced and to integrate our energies in ways that help us become the version of ourselves that we want to be in our present day lives. Yeah, absolutely. So if it's all right with you, we can wrap up our conversation with some rapid fire questions. Sounds good. Cool. So what is your sun moon rising? Gemini sun, uh, Cancer moon and Libra rising. How do you feel about that combination? Oh, I absolutely love it. I feel like having a, I actually have a stellium in Gemini, uh, sun, Venus, North node, and Chiron all in Gemini. And it's such a nice, I, I love, I mean, I know that I came into this world at the perfect time to have this combination because it's so complimentary to have all of this air, um, Gemini air energy, but then also have this Libra rising kind of like balance energy. And this is something that has been with me, I mean, obviously my whole life, but I often seen as someone who brings a lot of balance to to conversations, to interactions and things like that, which I absolutely love. Cancer Moon has been a learning experience for sure. I feel like for a lot of time, my moon being in Cancer meant a lot of almost like a feeling of obligation to service, to serve others, rather than really supporting myself in the ways that I needed to be supported. So that has been a learning experience for me with my business and how that has evolved. But ultimately it's been a really great combination and I've really just enjoyed having all this air energy. I mean, also having Venus in uh, Gemini, it just makes all of these learning experiences that much more beautiful for me. So that's been nice having that ruler, my first house ruler with my son. What are some of your favorite rituals for connecting to nature? Oh, that's a good one. You know, I wouldn't say I have a favorite right now because I'm so Gemini and I'm always changing, but I do right now i'm very much looking forward to spending time outside as the seasons are changing and having that like bringing my my paint outside i guess that would be something that i've done in the past as well but i'm really looking forward to seeing the new blossoms on the trees and being able to capture that through my artwork and connecting with nature in that way through um, kind of just like being able to express the energy and voice of nature in my artwork would you like a tarot reading yeah that would be awesome amazing what would you like to focus on today i guess i'm really curious about my just the energy of this next chapter that i'm moving into yeah so maybe just like a general for the spring summer kind of energy awesome okay so i'm shuffling the cards and i'm gonna pull three cards to check in on raven's upcoming spring energy ooh so i pulled the emperor eight of wands reversed and king of pentacles Interesting. and yeah 
And Raven reads tarot as well, so she knows what all of this means. But what I'm getting from the Emperor is you really becoming the authority in your own life and you making the rules and the structure in a way that really serves you and your lifestyle. So there's no one, you know, hanging over your shoulder. Like you are the boss and you also have a big picture vision of how you want to see your life unfold. What the Eight of Wands is telling me is that there's no need to rush with any of this and there's very much a beauty in the unfolding of divine timing and that everything will reveal itself in time when you're ready when you know whoever's supposed to come in is ready basically there's just like um seeds being planted for spring that will blossom you know in the summer and i think there's just a lot of things that even taking your own pace is a form of rebellion you know mm -hmm and very emperor that you're not going to budge for anyone else in this next phase of what you're building in your life. And then the king of pentacles, I feel like it could mean a couple things. <laughs> I feel like someone could be coming in, uh, someone that you're interested in, um, who has king of pentacles qualities. But I also feel like you're embodying more of that, of those qualities yourself, of being like the master of your material gains and really becoming confident with all of the magnetism that you're able to attract just by being yourself and also doing it on your own terms. Did you watch the Super Bowl, by the way? I did. <laughs> so halftime show, Rihanna performed this year. Oh, I did see that though. Yes. And I loved it because she just did her thing at her own pace. You know, she didn't really have to dance too much because she's Rihanna and she just set the tone. And I feel like that's very much the energy of this reading that you are the boss of your life you get to set the rules you get to decide you get to move at your own pace at whatever pace that is and through that you're like attracting more luxury you're attracting more opportunities you're attracting more just more in a way that feels really good to you and I feel like because you're attracting from that energy of feeling really stable within yourself and feeling really confident and just overall loving yourself to a point where you don't really need it from the outside, but you're attracting it because you've cultivated that relationship with yourself. So it's becoming effortless. I totally, that totally resonates. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yay, so happy for you. Yeah, I'm really excited. That definitely just give is a big confirmation for me of the next steps that I'm moving into in life and really, yeah, just being able to own it and kind of cultivating things in the way that makes sense for me. Beautiful. So Raymond, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so grateful for your presence. I feel like you just have a natural lilt <laughs> and a natural way of speaking about things that makes it easy for people to understand. And also this connection to your ancestors and also the earth, I feel like is a really beautiful way to connect to almost like a rebellion in choosing oneself or choosing one's history or choosing, you know, where we come from in nature. <laughs> So thank you so much. And I just wanted to ask you, where can the listeners follow up with you? Yeah. So my website is moonmedicine.co. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Moon Medicines, and through those channels, find me on YouTube. My YouTube channel is mo also Moon Medicines. But yeah, that's the best place to find me. And honestly, this has been so much fun. I've really enjoyed chatting with you and just like all the explorations that we got to dive into today were really beautiful. Agreed. Thank you so much and talk soon. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode with Raven. Raven embodies the Empress energy so beautifully, and I am so grateful that she was able to share her magic with us today. From healing her pain to purpose, to connecting to your womb space, aka your creative center, and unlocking your creativity. I'm wondering what parts of this interview most resonated with you. Be sure to leave a podcast review on Apple Podcasts and YouTube to support 
this channel and share your biggest insights from this episode. As always, sending you so much grace today and every day.